honour. Now tell me, where did, did your uh, tennis career start? I mean, we were Birmingham, Limerick. Yeah, well, my parents moved to England for 10 years to Birmingham and uh, the house that we, uh, that we lived in was literally across the road from a great club called Edgebass and Priory um, that um, has produced a lot of good players. Dan Evans, who played Federer on centre court this week, uh, is from there. A fantastic club. Um, so that's where my eldest sister Gina and brother Ross got into it, and my brother Ray as well. I was only three then when we moved back to Limerick. Wow. But my mom had, or sorry, my sister had been um, kind of a British top two, top three player. Um, so we built a court uh, in the back garden in Limerick when we moved home. As um, you do. As you do. Um, and uh, an Astro court as well. And uh, wow. yeah, it was it was amazing, obviously for me to be able to practice with my older brothers and sisters with this court out the back. We were members of Limerick Lawn Tennis Club as well and yeah. spent an awful lot of time there but uh, you know I did the bulk of my sort of tennis training uh, out the back garden um, you know with my mum, my dad and brothers and sisters so yeah it was a great And you training. won the Irish Boys Championship? I did yeah I, I mean I was I suppose one and two in Ireland all the way up from sort of the age of nine or ten really uh, and managed to win the Fitzwilliam under 18s as a, in 99 and uh, my final year which was great it's always the kind of the big one that you want to win at the end of the old Irish domestic season at the end of the summer. You had a famous win as a youngster. I did I think I know what you're referring to um, <laughs> I beat Roger Federer um, we were you playing. You beat Roger I Federer. I beat Roger Federer I'll say it again no problem. Um, <laughs> I, uh, we played um, as an event called the Winter Cup um, in France uh, for the under 14 kind of European teams um, and uh, we played Switzerland um, and uh, the coach at the tournament, a guy called Jim Watt um, from, from, from the north was our coach for the weekend, uh, weekend event and uh, he made sort of notes and charted the match and did the statistics and all that and I, I have that at home basically uh, I think it might, might have gone missing uh, over the years but I remember after Federer won the ju won junior Wimbledon about four years later I remember I still had it in my room so I said oh your man's gone and won junior Wimbledon he's gone a little bit better in the last yeah. four years um, and obviously then he went on to you know unbelievable heights so yeah, yeah. a nice one to do and uh, something I don't mind to talking about too much. I can imagine you <laughs> mightn't. I'd be quite pleased to tell everybody I bought I beat Federer as well. The Challenge Tour how tough was that? Uh, it's difficult. I mean, the Futures Tour is the first rung. Um, so you've got three to, uh, tiers to pro tennis. You've got the Futures, um, which is for guys that are from 300 in the world down to 2,000. Then you've got 100 in the world to 300 is the Challenger Tour. And then 100 to the top uh, is the stuff you see on TV. Um, and do, 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 you, do you meet a lot of big names and that kind of thing? You do see some guys coming up. Everybody starts at the Futures level. Um, you know, you, that's just the nature of it to get your first points. Um, so, you know, I've played um, uh, guys like Jersey Janovich, who made a semi-final at Wimbledon um, a couple of years ago. I played uh, Thomas Muster, who made a, um, a comeback at the age of 42. Um, he did a sort of a year of, um, uh, as I say, a comeback, and I managed to play him in, in Germany uh, and get a win over him as well. So I was able to get Federer very young and Muster very old and get a couple of <laughs> couple of number one wins in under my belt. Um, but yeah, the Challenge Tour is, is a tough. It's a tough lifestyle. Uh, you're on the road 35 weeks a year. Um, you have to try and uh, get a coach uh, with you for those weeks, which can be expensive. Whereas some of the national federations in the bigger co uh, countries are able to pay for coaches and a kind of a support team around their players. So you're fending for yourself a little bit out there, and it's it's obviously very competitive. It's an international yeah. sport. So. And tell me about the main draw at Wimbledon. Yeah, I mean, it's it definitely look back uh, on it as the, the highlight of my career. The qualifying, uh, last round of qualifying um, match point is sort of the best feeling I've had ever on a tennis court, really, to get over the line. I had a lot of friends and family um, at the last round of qualifying um, and uh, played a good match then in the first round against Manorino from France. Um, probably should have won it. I was um, up, to, well, a double break in the fifth set um, and would have played Roger in the second round on centre court which would have been amazing but it didn't happen um, but I managed to get uh, into the main draw of the US Open a couple of uh, months later and got the experience of playing on a big court had a grand slam so it was a great summer 2011. And you, had you won that you would have gone on to play Djokovic is that right? I played Djokovic oh, um, what happened was I qualified um, I think I played on the Friday last round of qualifying and uh, ended up getting ill over the weekend at a um, 
a restaurant. This was the food poisoning. Yeah, it was, it was food poisoning. I woke up um, that, that night uh, really, really ill. So there was a couple of days before my Djokovic match where I was, wasn't feeling good. So I went out and played. Um, and played up to sort of 4-1 in the second set um, and I just couldn't uh, couldn't continue. I wouldn't have started the match if it was any other tournament but obviously I wanted the experience of, of going out and playing on, on a big court. But uh, yeah, kind of a funny one. I, I, kind of a, a summer in that I had some kind of bittersweet. I had some great uh, moments in qualifying for Wimbledon in the US but then you know some disappointments and not being able to win at Wimbledon and not being able to kind of feel 100%. And of course Djokovic went on to win that. Won it in 2011. That's right. He, mm -hmm. he he think he won three of the four that year. So he was uh, he was uh, he was doing incredible stuff. Still is. So tell me about the Davis Cup matches. Then uh, you've had a few of those. I have. Yeah, I made my debut in 2000. Um, uh, Goran Ivanisevic um, was the number one player for Croatia uh, in my debut uh, in Fitzwilliam uh, in 2000. So it was quite a um, quite a start. Um, they went on to win the whole event the whole of the Davis Cup, I think the year after, maybe two years later. Mm. Um, they had Mario Ansic, who was a top 10 player. They had Ivo Karlovic, who's still, I think, about 20 in the world. I played Karlovic uh, on my debut on the Sunday uh, in a dead rubber. Um, and uh, yeah, a great introduction um, to have a big star. That was 2000, Goran won Wimbledon the following year. Wow. So he was right at the top of his game. We had the challenger a few years ago and had a couple of guys in the top 75, but it'd be lovely to have a tournament where we have the very best in the world coming to shores. And with the very most beautiful Carrick Mines tennis club in which to host it <laughs> exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah. And the Irish <laughs> summer to go with it. <laughs> Do you hold any Davis Cup records? Um, I don't know. I played for 13 years. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close to uh, all-time singles wins. I think I might be number two. Um, uh, I've retired at 30. Uh, I had hip, hip uh, surgery after I retired, so I wasn't able to go on as, much, as long as I would like. Um, but uh, you know, I had a pretty good, uh, pretty good Davis Cup record, and always loved playing it. And I'm delighted now to be the um, Davis Cup captain uh, for the last two years. Um, so uh, no, it's it's always the most fun time of the year for me. Really, Davis Cup is uh, it's great to be part of a team. You know, in tennis, it's an individual sport. You don't get the opportunity. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. It's great to get a home match as well. And any. New names coming through the system, Sinead, Lowen, Simon, Cor. Yes, yeah, uh, Sinead Lowen had a match point uh, in the semi-finals of the NCAs um, a couple of months ago um, and lost to the winner uh, of the whole thing. So that's, you know, kind of, I, I made the quarterfinals of the NCA singles back in 2006 and to be kind of more or less, you know, getting to the very, very end stages of the NCA tournament um, kind of bodes really well for being a potential top 200 type player. Sure. Um, and that's, you know, so that's great. She's only in her second year. And Simon Carr, who's only 16, uh, has now got a world ranking, a senior world ranking, um, which is impressive. Um, I got my first point, I think, at 18. And I think most of the top Irish players over the years would generally have broken through at about 18. Mm -hmm. And he's full time. He's not at school, but uh, so he's playing week in, week out. But for him to be getting a, getting a world ranking at that age is certainly it bodes well and obviously George Drummy qualified for the Australian Open juniors um, in January at 16 or 15 even I think she was 15 I think she was 16 in April and um, so she's got a couple more years in the juniors so there's definitely signs of you know it happening obviously myself Luke Sorensen, and James McKee all made the f uh, main draw of the US Open in recent years whereas it had been as you said in the intro you know 30 years since we uh, we had somebody playing in the in the main draws of Grand Slam, so I think it's slowly getting, you know, a little bit better. I think our expectations are getting a little bit higher. And you're coaching at Carrick Mines at the moment. How does the club rate? I mean, you've probably played in some of the biggest clubs in the world. I have, uh, uh, but uh, Carrick Mines is a super club, and um, it's a centenary club as well. Um, yeah. So it's. Um, it has some fantastic um, relationships with some great clubs um, around Europe. Um, the Roth Club in Berlin, um, the Real Club in Barcelona, um, and uh, you know this place stacks up. You know with the the grass courts look look immaculate. Uh, Simon does a brilliant job all year um, getting them ready for the summer. Um, the weather doesn't sometimes play uh, play its part, but uh, you know to have the indoor courts, the real grass courts, and a brand new clubhouse, it's super. And uh, you know I'd love. Um, love work with the juniors up here. Uh, I'm here once or twice a week um, over the last sort of three years, um, and uh, no, it's a great club with a great atmosphere, and I, I love being a part of it. I'm only living down the road these days. I'm not in Limerick anymore, so uh, yeah, no, it's a super place. Connor, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Connor. Cheers. Cheers.